What up, what up, what up? It's your boy ARP. Rare Bit Entertainment is the movement. Back with a new blog for y'all. Big salute and shout out to everybody supporting that social distance series that we came up with and we got dropping every day at 8 a.m. Of course, I gotta lay out the whole voting system for y'all about how we're gonna handle the GoFundMe. Start getting that payment out to the battlers who won each category. I'm gonna break all that down. We're gonna talk about social distance. Uh, in my next blog. Oh yeah, and real quick, if you want your RBE gear and your RBE apparel, make sure y'all keep going to rarebreakent.com. What I'm rocking right now is the Throwback Flex Fit. You know what I'm saying? If you're rocking with it, let us know. Uh, as far as hats, we switched back to the dad hats. But if y'all want us to bring these versions back, we can just let us know. We'll make sure that we got them on order for y'all. This is really, really starting to be a big weight on the shoulders of many. So I figured I'd come up with a top five good and bad ways that this global pandemic is impacting battle rap. Number one, creativity and innovation. We're seeing a lot of platforms, a lot of battlers doing things that they've never done before. You see IG live battles. I see uh, battlers uh, doing their old throwback bars. I seen like, for example, Oops do one of those. You got battlers battling fans. Like for example, I saw New Jersey Twerk battling fans. You know, you'd be surprised how many of our fans are aspiring rappers and battlers. Giving them a chance to exchange bars with some of their favorite battlers or some of the people that they watch on a daily basis and shit in this culture. Um, that right there is sick. Seen the two on two. You know, some of that creativity that I saw in, in DNA and Shines Round, like on the staircase, where it looks like they throw something to each other and shit, like they really in the same place. Nina, they like how it land up here. I'm about to see you to the man upstairs. Another one I saw was like John John versus DNA. You know, having like an IG live battle setup where fans could pay in advance to get access to see the battle go down. You know, innovation, man. Ways of figuring out how we can get content to the fans. You know, I love it. I love it. People are coming up with new business tactics, new business models. Then you got something like the social distance card that RBE created. You're talking about visually the most creative card ever put together. You know, pushing a visual based concept. Bars is bars. We still want to hear the raps. We still want to see winners and losers. But now we got people doing skits. We got people, you know, focusing on their camera work and their locations and, you know, all types of shit. That right there is, is innovation. It's creativity. You know, dropping a battle every fucking day for 15 days straight. We would have never done something like that before. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how YouTube releases go. You might get them weekly. You might get them a few a month. Sometimes you might never get them. Two, you got matchups that may have never taken place on the stage, may have never gotten booked. You know what I'm saying? You got people that may be willing to take opponents that they would have never taken before. You got people working on platforms that they never worked with before. You know what I'm saying? I, we haven't had a chance to work with Street Hymns or, or, or Bankhead. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with them. RBE fucks with them. But um, you don't know how long it would have taken us to connect. I think right now the playing field has been opened up more. You know what I'm saying? You got battlers that used to be a little bit more focused on the type of battles that they're comfortable with, the type of opponents that might be on their hit list, shit like that. But right now, you know, people's being way more flexible. Big K, he battled Floss the Boss. You know what I mean? Big K, um, he's usually a, a hitman for hire. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could pretty much put a lot of people in front of him. I know Big K and what he's got on the table coming up before this virus shit going on, some of the matchups that's really in front of him. So it might have been tough to get Floss the Boss, who's on the come up a chance to exchange balls with Big K right now, being that, you know, K's schedule is kind of crazy. Trust me, he's got some shit coming up. But yeah, that flexibility is giving fans a chance to create more storylines, more grudges. We're releasing social distance battles where we're seeing fans say, yeah, we need to see that for three rounds now. Number three, who are we kidding? Event and setup simplicity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we literally put together 15 battles in like seven hours. If this was an all out event, you know, two, three month promotional run and a whole big stage set up with the venue and the engineering and the production and the travel and the promotion. And this battle is getting flown to champion. That one's going to rap matic. This one's on 15 minutes of fame and hip hop and all that. Hip hop is real and all that type of shit. All of this stuff is coordinated effort. You know what I'm saying? To promote, lead in, and deliver an event is so many moving pieces. I'll give you another example from pictures that I saw. I saw, um, uh, shots of uh, Suge versus Jerry West and it just looked like two people in a room. I didn't see a host in between them um, Obviously no crowd, you know, everybody should be trying to stay away from each other as much as possible Practicing social distance if you're just taking two battlers and a cameraman for the most part 
and you put you find in a room to put them in. You don't even need to rent a studio probably. You could just pick somebody's basement, put some lights up, get a cameraman, shoot that shit. Number four, people still need their entertainment. You know what companies is probably sounds fucked up to say, but they're probably happy that some of this shit is going on. Look at a platform like Instagram. Think about how much they might average of people going live day to day, week to week versus how many people's going live now. And even though that's shooting through the roof right now, you could take that away. People just on social media more because people are stuck at home. Another one is Netflix. There's movies right now that's bypassing the movie theater and going straight to Netflix. 1999, two day rental. <laughs> Some of these platforms are up because in times of recession, remember when we went through a recession, you know I mean, and, and real estate was down and you know, the economy was down and money was down and all that type of shit, you know, Stats show that people retreat to their homes. So point being, battle rap is no different. Battle rap has fans around the world. People are looking for shit to watch right now. People are looking for their forms of entertainment. And number five, our culture shows resiliency. Sponsors are watching, celebrities are always watching. Later on, why would somebody want to invest in that? If we're just that, that volatile to falling over. I've done like three interviews where people have asked me about that already. I've done an interview on, um, with somebody that's doing a documentary from NYU. I think the person is putting together like a bunch of notable people in the, in the culture and talking to them about what they're doing during times like this and, and how they're going about things. Uh, I saw another article pop up on allhiphop.com. That's a big platform. And um, it was also talking about how RBE is, is putting out content during these times. So people's paying attention to that shit. People want to know. People are looking for answers. They're looking at the league owners. They're looking at the battlers and they're saying, what you going to do now? Top five bad ways that the coronavirus and the global pandemic is impacting battle rap. Negotiations are down. Business is still business and it doesn't make sense to try to pay somebody like, let's say, $10,000 for a battle that would normally come with ticket sales, maybe more YouTube views, pay-per-view. VOD. These are streams of income that are kind of cut down pretty short right now. Let's just talk about the door because you'd be surprised to see big events happen in 2020 unless people are just being wild and irresponsible and don't give a fuck about their health. You're talking about general admission, VIP, um, stage passes. If you got parts of the bar and you're getting percentages of the liquor or food that's being sold in there, merchandise, merchandise tables and all types of shit that happens when you have live events as far as revenue, that's gone. That's not happening right now. It shouldn't happen right now. So if you have, let's say hypothetically, $50,000 off of your budget of what you might make for your event, how do you turn around and still pay some of the battlers? you know, what, what, what they normally would make in a situation like that where you got a crowd of paying customers for 500 people or, or 1,000 people. You know, obviously you have to negotiate differently. And negotiating differently obviously leads me into number two, budgeting. Budgeting is something that um, battlers and leagues really have to wrap their minds around and, and pay a little bit more attention to right now because you always got people that are just reach. Number one and two, are kind of related. Negotiations are down, so that means people are going to be making less money, and budgeting can go left or it could go right if you're not paying attention to what your revenue is going to be and how people are reacting to the entertainment that they're consuming right now during a time like this. I know the climate of the fan base regularly year to year in battle rap, you know what I'm saying? But when you got a situation like this, things change. People's attitudes towards battle rap can be changing. People's attitudes towards how much money they spend a month or what they buying right now could be changing. You know what I'm saying? We got to see this trend go for a little bit to really get a stronger hold on budget. Hopefully by then shit is over and we back to normal. But um, as long as we're in this type of state right here, budgeting could be... Uh... Number three, saturation. All right, let's get a little bit off the business talk. You may see battlers taking more battles right now, um, and I fully support that because we all got to hustle, we all got to grind, we all got to feed our families. RBE is paying for these social distance battles, you know what I'm saying? We're supporting the battle battlers. We opened up a GoFundMe where 100% of the money goes to the battle rappers. We are supporting the culture. RBE is, you know what I'm saying? But um, at the same time, in situations like this where people might be moving around a little bit more, grabbing a few more checks, being a little bit more visible. 
You just can't help it. There's no way around it. With that comes saturation. And we know how we are in battle rap. You know, people will love you today and hate you tomorrow. You'll be my favorite league today and I'll hate you during your next event. So hopefully the fans give us all the pass in that regard. Hopefully they see, you know, RBE pumping out volume 2, volume 3, volume 4, social distance. They don't go, all right, man, we've seen enough. Hopefully they don't look at their favorite battle and say, damn, I saw you battle on IG Live last week. Or I seen you battle on social distance last week. Because we're all in grind mode, we're trying to be productive, we're trying to keep y'all entertained. People are still trying to earn a check right now, so hopefully the fans give us a pass on this, but in people's subconscious, saturation might start to weigh in. Number four, the importance and impact of a given battle on event outcome. If Swave Sever and Clean Paper battle and Swave, you know, kills Clean in a social distance battle, or vice versa, whatever. If Clean kills Swave, you know, um... Are y'all going to carry that throughout the entire year as an official win and an official loss? Or even if it's a three-round battle, you know what I'm saying? Are y'all going to give it the same weight that y'all would give it if it took place on stage in front of a crowd and live production with Avocado and Rapmatic and all these different people shooting and you got face offs and all the promo leading in, the whole build-up? Are y'all going to still give it the same weight? Shine versus Twerk, I saw that announced. That's a good example while I'm thinking about this shit. Um, and pardon me if I'm wrong, if, if, if it was just like a rumor, pardon me, but um, I think I saw it on Champion, shout out to Jay Black. One thing that I noticed is, is the feedback and the energy of an announcement like that What wasn't too heavy. And it's not Sean and Twerk's fault. There's a bunch of platforms that could have announced that battle and it would have been a huge announcement. The whole culture would have shook for a battle like that. That's a big matchup. I don't see that. I don't feel that shakeup. Um, and, and, and that's what I'm curious of. When that battle goes down, whether it's one round, three rounds, whether, whether it's done on IG Live, whether they get in a room together, however, whatever the format of it is, what's the importance that you guys are going to put on that? The importance of how the fans look at some of these battles and some of these announcements carries to even how some of the battlers is going to treat them. Not necessarily shine and twerk. Any battler. They might be like, man, these fans don't really judge or care about this IG live battle so you know fuck it let me just throw some bars together how the fans are weighing in on these battles and judging these battles and how the battlers are taking these matches you know is it going to stay on 10 and number five what's a step up from the importance to the battle rappers the fans the bloggers the media just battle rap period battle rap is a small niche market who are we kidding it's a lot of smoke and mirrors you got a lot of leagues and league owners that are way, way smaller than you would think. Whether it be financially, whether it be uh, who some of these people are in real life, some of their accomplishments in real life. And it's no different with the battlers. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's a lot of smoke and mirrors in this culture. But one reason why we've been able to bring battle rap to a certain level where we got celebrities, we got sponsors, we got endorsements, we got movies, we got TV situations. Uh, we're getting interviews on, on major publications, ma major media outlets. You could see Math on Fox 5 or you could see him on Drink Champs. You could see uh, Loaded Lux and Disaster in the Body movie and, and, and much other, many other battlers and, and people from the culture. Battle Rap has been in a fight to get the credit and it deserves for years. Shit, even the fucking Battle Rappers are starting to be a little bit more proud of being Battle Rappers. You go back three, four, five years, a lot of battle rappers didn't even want to be categorized as battlers. They just, I do music, but I battle every once in a while. Motherfuckers be ducking the fact that they battle rappers. They don't say battle rapper on their bios half the time and shit. Fast forward, people are, are a little bit more comfortable with just saying my career is a battle rapper. You know what I mean? The respect is, is there now, that, that it, it wasn't there before. You gotta think about the presentation that we all put on. Smoke and mirrors or not, when you see these productions and when you see these events and you see these battles, it feels big. It feels like your favorite league owners and your favorite battle rappers all got money and all live in these big nice houses and drive luxury cars and their families are taken care of and they got money in the bank and all of this shit. You got the crowd there, you got, you got the whole ambiance, you got the feel, you got the energy of the whole situation. The promotion, the coverage, the lead up, the narratives, the storylines. Grudge map, all of this shit. If you remove that, 
Does battle rap look smaller? Does battle rap still maintain the same level of respect? On a positive note, will we possibly even come up with a way of doing this shit that's better than the old way? You never know. You know, the fans have a big say in that. If the fans say social distance format is more creative and better than before, then we'll start booking them for three rounds and we'll try a few events like that and see what the reaction is. And maybe we'll then move them to VOD or maybe we'll try to stream them in a way. Like, fuck it, send two stream services out and camera crews to both battlers and do this shit live and find a way to interact and put a host in the middle, whatever. Like, like we could figure out anything that we really want to apply ourselves to. And I've been asked this a lot. After the Get Back event was over, we already started booking our next card. We literally have battle battlers out there holding contracts and deposits. Some of the battles that we booked are not going to be put into no fucking social distance system because they cost too much. <laughs> we paid too much for them already. But um, you got to think about what's more important as well. Everything ain't about a dollar. Every red penny ain't good. If I got to look at myself and say, do you really, really want to be in a venue right now or be in these airports? or be on these airplanes and all this shit right now to, to put on these events? And if that answer is no, then it could definitely be a minute because there's no drop off point in this shit. There's no, okay, everybody come back outside. Don't, I don't give a fuck what Trump says. I mean, even that could be a conspiracy. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about this spin. Let's say we get a vax, a vaccine, you know, for the frontline essential workers, September, October, I heard. Um, that's still millions of people. By the time it makes its way to people that are not essential frontline people, doctors and firemen and all that types of shit, you know, it could be even more months after that. And some people don't even want to fuck with vaccines. And even if you do, you're not going to want to be the first in line for the shit. You're going to want to see for a second what's happening in society with the side effects your local doctor, you want to make sure that he's fully versed and knowledgeable on the vaccine, what it can and it can't do, because vaccines react differently in everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like like one person can get a vaccination and just be like, all right, whatever, next person can get a, get a vaccination and have a fucking heart attack. I'm speaking reality. I'm not trying to scare nobody. Like, let's speak reality. Let's make sure that we pass around the type of knowledge to keep each other as safe as possible. You don't, you don't want to do anything without giving it some logical thought of how it can impact you and your family and um i've seen even people with the assumptions that shit if trump opens the doors and says everybody come back outside that could be simply because the vaccine is here and, and it's just like fucking cancer you know the money is not in the cure it's in the treatment so you have millions and millions and millions of people getting these vaccinations and it doesn't have to be a one-time thing there's a lot of people in the world that's gotten more than one flu shot right as viruses evolve, as seasons change, people re-up with their vaccinations and their shots and shit. That, that vaccination will evolve as well. So people want to go back and get additional ones. It all costs money. It all, it all generates money. And not to be a conspiracy theorist, you know what I'm saying? Let's just talk about something that on the side of it helping us and, and helping us stay healthy and, and curing people and saving people's lives. You know, if you're looking at it like that as well, once again, how long does it take to get to the average consumer? How long does it take? You know what I'm saying? Like, when is that going to be available, you know, on the drop on the drop of a dime for anybody? Like, oh, I need this. I'm going to the doctor real quick. Boom, got it. Is everybody going to be supplied like that right away? Is it going to be like toilet paper in the fucking world? Like, uh, if you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't. You know what I'm saying? I could ramble about this type of shit so much because I've been looking at, you know, society, pay attention to what's coming out of politics and like government or the president, pay attention to the people that you know are personally affected by this shit. I know doctors, I know firemen that tell me shit and I'm like, okay, I understand. Then you have your own opinions. You factor all this shit up, man. It's like, nah. This ain't no overnight shit of us getting back to the way life was before. So I said all of that to fucking say, don't be surprised if there's no RBE event of which I was used to. I'm talking about in the venue with a big promo and a big car and all that shit until sometime in 2021. I wouldn't be surprised 
Cause I ain't gonna be the first one out there fucking trying to jump into a venue just for the sake of getting some new battles on the channel or get some battles sold on pay-per-view. No sir. No sir, there's other things in this world that are more important to me. So everybody is different. Some people um, are not scared to get out there. Some people be hopping on planes and they won't worry about it. Other people don't believe that the virus is real. Um, you got people that also, and I respect these people, that have to get in these situations to earn their money. I have total respect for that. I mean, your hustle is your hustle. But um, everybody is different. And um, I put my health before everything. A lot on the way, man. More blocks, too. I'll be right back at y'all with social distance, uh, winners, uh, judge and breakdown. Um, more talk about the social distance card. I got y'all. I'm trying to get back into blogging mode again. I haven't been blogging on the channel because we've been releasing battles. All right? Who the fuck wants to hear from me when you got new bars to listen to? So uh, it's your boy. I'll be back in a second.